Oh la la! Welcome back to another episode of the Stampy Weepy Show. This episode is brought to you by Mac Weldon. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome, for the very first time, comedian Sarah Weinshank. Shank? Yeah, Shank. I said, okay, Weinshank. I said you it right. You got it, you got it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having Ooh. me. I'm super excited to be here. You are highly recommended by your friend, yeah. Rachel Wolfson. Yeah, Wolfie. Wolfie. Yeah. Is that her nickname? Yeah, I call her Wolfie. I mean, like, at first I was like, this bitch wants me to call her Wolfie. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know. It just, everyone calls her that, and she, it works for her. Do you know her mom's the person, she she put away OJ? Yeah, her mom's the judge that put OJ in jail. Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. I, I was like, she told me that. I'm like, it just kind of, like, flew by my head. And then I'm like, hey, I'm going to look that up. And then there's, like, she's she really did it. I know. Have you met her? The mom? Yeah. I'm meeting her actually on Friday. <laughs> I'm meeting Rachel's, Wolfie's mom on Friday. Are you, Big ner- things are you are nervous? Happening. Kind of. She's a judge. Right? Are you going to, you guys going to? Are we going to smoke weed? Before, probably. Be- I wouldn't recommend it before meeting your mom. <laughs> Right? Yeah, because you could probably see I just see got nervous it. about it. You did? Yeah. It's okay. You could probably. Am I nervous about smoking weed in front of Wolfie's mom now? You should because do Because she put OJ in jail. I feel like she's got to know her daughter smokes lots of weed. How much do you guys smoke? I'm just curious. I, I quit, but I used to smoke a lot. But, yeah. but how, like, do you, well, do you wake like- up, wake and bake? Uh, sometimes, but it looks like you're someone who smokes weed. You have all these, like, fun things. Like, well, I don't know if that's <laughs> Well, like this a- is my creative outlet. Okay. Yeah. So this is your creative wall. What is yeah. it? Um, I don't know. We well, so that's a very good question. Okay. Um, when I started the podcast, um, two and a half years ago, it was by the um, the hot plate. Okay. And it was just <laughs> one chair there. Okay. And there was no desk, so okay. it was really awkward. It was just me, and then the guest was like right next to me, and we would just be looking at each other. Right. And then I'm like, you know, I want to go to IKEA. Ooh. And get like a desk to corner it off. It's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. It, so this is really like the backdrop of your podcast. Yeah. All this stuff. And then these, a lot of these stickers have been previous guests. Like Losco, Nathaniel, Shorty, DJ Shorty. Um, that's uh, Alice, uh, you know, Malicious Creatures. That's Alice's uh, clothing oh, yeah, company. Yeah. Uh, Bat Butt is a, he's like a fan that's always, you know, he's an artist. A lot of artists send like packages I love and stickers. it. Yeah. I like that Pendleton ad. A man that never oh, you has do. enough Pendletons. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. Thank, dude, thank you for uh, yeah, you're recognizing. The fir- you're the first one that brought that up. Because uh, uh, Pendletons, I only have two in my closet, but they're pretty hard to find. They are hard to find. They're great plaids. Mm-hmm. If, Explain flannels. to the viewers in... Uh, Listeners, what a Pendleton is. A Pendleton is a type <sighs> of plaid slash flannel, like men's outerwear thing. And they're based out of Oregon. Are they based out of Oregon? Yeah. And they have like great, um, their stuff's expensive and it's really nice and it lasts a really long time. And they're female, like wool flannels yeah. and jackets. Fan. Yeah. A big fan. Um, Pendleton. Are you, do you have, do you own Pendleton's as well? I own one Pendleton flannel and mm-hmm. then a Pendleton beanie. Okay. That's cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to get to, cause, um, I saw your photo shoot, by the way. Oh, you did? The Cheech and Chong tribute. Yeah, we dude, that was sick, dude. Thank Up you. Up in Smoke is a yeah, classic movie. So, 
Rachel was like, I really want to do this. Let's do it. And I was like, do we want to do it? Because it seems like a pain in the ass to put together a photo shoot. You know what Dude, I mean? It like, came, it, it looked good. I mean, it came out amazing. And yeah. I couldn't be more excited that we did it. But it's like with like comedy and podcasts and all this different stuff. It's like photo shoots. It seems like you const- I constantly need like content. Yeah. Tell me about it. It's nonstop. This. OK, so this is what. I started doing, but now there's, I have another vlog where I open packages. I have a PO box and people send in packages. Ooh. And then we have another one called Stevie on the streety where it's like on <laughs> the like street that. interviews. Uh huh. And then, and then there's, there's another one too. Oh, we have clips now due to, uh, Ren's going to start doing those. Oh, cool. So going back to the content, you're saying you have to post a lot. Yeah. It feels like you constantly have to post, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Well, in today's world, you do. And it's Unfor- constant. Unfortunately. It's kind of sucks. Or people think you, you're you not around anymore. <laughs> like, I haven't heard from this bitch in a week. Who cares yeah. about her now? <laughs> it's almost kind of like... It, it says a lot about where we're at as a society as far as, like, our attention spans. and Yeah. Because, like, back then, it's like... You would wait months for a movie or a year, but now, like, okay, next. Like, I just saw The Joker. Yeah. Have you seen it? No, I'm freaked out by it. It's pretty intense. Okay, I'm not into it. It's like, I'm not into it at all. I've never been into the Joker, the makeup and stuff. Like, I got freaked out about the whole Joker thing after the Heath Ledger stuff. Like, because he was the Joker, then he died. And then right around that time, everyone was wearing that weird Joker makeup. And it just kind of freaked me out. So since then, I'm like not on board with the Joker. Yeah. But I saw like some random bitch walking down the street with full Joker makeup. And I'm like, one, it's not even close to Halloween yet. Two, like... You're for sure mentally ill. Right. And it's like, can you just calm down? Did you see her right now on the street? <laughs> yes. Outside earlier. Outside of this place? No. I saw her earlier down the street from here. Oh, damn. That's crazy. Maybe she was doing an early Halloween kind of warm up. Maybe. Thing. Or yeah. maybe she's just like <laughs> super hype. Yeah. On the Joker. Um, You know. You you could you could wait on it, but it's worth at least seeing once. I'm curious, but I'm also scared. Like the I don't like like clownish. I don't like the makeup. What like about Pennywise from it? Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't like scary. I don't like scary. I don't like mysteries with murder. I don't watch any of those crime docs. Why is that? Were you always like that? Yeah, like I'm a huge pussy. Like. Give me like some cartoons yeah. and like a, a hug. Yeah. That's more my vibe because I already feel like I'm dark enough. Like watching too much dark shit is not my thing. Um, did you, were you always scared of horror movies and stuff? I mean, I never really, it's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always? I remember when I was a kid, um, that movie Chucky came out. Yeah, child's play. Yeah, Chucky came out. And now looking at Chucky, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, but, like, but you were scared as a kid? As a kid, there was Chucky stuff everywhere, like posters yeah. everywhere. And I was like, I remember like crying because yeah, I yeah. was like, get this scary doll. Like, why would I? That's like a kid's nightmare. Yeah. So yeah. you don't, I take it you don't have any dolls laying around your apartment or anything. No, I'm not yeah. a doll bitch. Uh, okay. <laughs> what fair if enough, I was? What if enough. I was? <laughs> hey, yeah. fair, that, that'd be I don't know. Weird. It'd be weird, but cool. To if be, they it, were the right dolls. That's like me having like a GI Joe collection or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be, be mad weird. at like one or two GI Joes. Yeah, so like a, I like a vinyl figure. Yeah, yeah. Or toys but, are cool. Like I'm not mad at a vinyl figure. Yeah, I, I mean, have a hipster Minnie Mouse that I oh, like. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'm newer. <laughs> so do you, so do you collect um toys? No, I just have a hipster Minnie Mouse, okay, and I have one. Okay. A, Ro- a Rosie O'Donnell doll, just because I thought it was funny. She's dope. Yeah, well, she, she's, she's like, it's from oh, when she had her show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like her in a pantsuit. Yeah, yeah. It's a ridiculous Barbie doll with Rosie, and it's hilarious. She, Rosie O'Donnell. Didn't she, is she a comic, too? I mean. Yeah, she's a, I guess, she was a comic. Uh-huh, I, uh-huh. Where is she now? Let's I have see. no idea because that because I'm trying to I'm trying topic. to like picture her in my mind. Okay, I got it. I know I know what she looks like. Oh yeah, Rosie O'Donnell. you have to know what yeah, Rosie yeah, yeah, looks yeah. like. I mean, yeah. Let's get to your. So, where are you originally from? From the valley, from here. Okay, and then how did you um, get into com- stand up comedy? So I always was 
I always wanted to perform like as a kid and stuff I would do plays and theater and acting classes and I remember I was like mom and dad I want to be an actress because I grew up in LA and they were like uh no you're not gonna be a why child. were they so against it because like a lot of the kids that I went to school with the, there was like a few stage moms because mm-hmm. I went to school here yeah, describe define what a stage mom stage is mom? to the viewers and listeners okay please. stage mom is a mom who how do you put it doesn't give a fuck about their kid and basically spends their whole life trying to pursue their dreams through that of their child. Oh, so they <laughs> they live out their dreams through their child. Yeah, vicariously. So they're, so they're taking them to auditions. Yes. Like doing new headshots. Yes. And saying, you got to get this role. Are you ready? Yeah, again, yeah. from the top. Right. You know? Wow, that's... And like, I was wish my mom was a stage mom. I was like, come on, I want to be going yeah. to these auditions. And she was like, no, you're, we're not doing that. And like, in hindsight, I guess it was for the best. But so I always had like an interest, an interest in performing. And then after college, um, I didn't even want to go to college. Like I wanted to just skip college and just go on the real world. Like that was my plan. I remember that show. I was like, I just want to go in the real world. Like, yeah. I don't get why you guys want me to go to college. Um, and then I took an acting class after college and my acting teacher was like, I think you should do stand up. And he oh. gave me an assignment of writing a bit. And that was like nine years ago, almost 10 oh, years ago. Wow. You've been doing it that yeah. long. Hey, good for you. Yeah. It's All fun. right. Good I'm for like, you. You, <laughs> you did it. You did. Yeah. It. And then you, you stuck with it. too. Yeah. So what were those first couple months? Wait, hold, let's hold off on that. Okay. We're going to get right back to it because it's a word from our sponsor. Mac Weldon, what do you think about the clothes? I'm feeling these clothes. What about the pants? Look at these cool zippers. I love it. And the socks. Ooh, the socks are fun. Yeah. I love a fun sock. I mean, the shirt looks really soft. Thank which you. I like. Can I feel yeah. it? Ooh, yeah. it is. Yeah, better than the gap. Yeah, better than the gap. Yeah. Better than actually a lot. What's that? You can see my socks. Striped and Only fun. at Mac Weldon. So now, word from our sponsor, Mac Weldon. Now a word from our sponsor, Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon's mission statement is to make sure all your basics and beyond are smartly designed and shopping for them is easy and convenient. Mac Weldon is a premium men's essentials brand that believes in smart design and premium fabrics. My experience was super easy and convenient. I didn't have to go anywhere. All I did was go on their website, pick the stuff I wanted, put it into my cart, and then it just it just came super fast, and it comes super well packaged and clean. I'll give you an example, because I ordered a grip of these awesome socks, some of the best designs and the most comfortable, comfortable socks you'll ever wear. Okay. So definitely, it, it th- that's a vi- that's a plus. It's super convenient and easy, and they'll they'll ship it right to where, wherever you're at. Okay, Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, and undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that you'll ever wear. I could vouch for that. They have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means odor eliminating. Okay. They want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you could keep it, and they will still refund you, no questions asked, okay? So my personal experience, okay? So what I'm wearing right now, I got the Ace sweatpants. These are super comfortable, right? Zip pockets, drawstring. They got um, the cushion. Um, they got the um, tailored fit, back ribbed ankle cuffs. Boom, right there. Okay, these are super comfortable. You could do any any kind of activity in these bad boys. And I also got um, a grip of them everyday extended crew socks, as you could see. I'm a I'm really like picky as far as like the designs of the socks that I, I'm a big sock guy. And dude, they have. I mean, dude, these are tight. I mean, look how look look at these, right? Super comfortable socks, dopest designs cushion footbed extended crew length you know what i mean and i also like look at this shirt i'm wearing this is the, the this is the the other thing i got look at look at the fit it's called the pima crew neck t-shirt okay i got the green look at that fits me perfectly soft pima cotton recovery collar and that's a thing about me is if i find like it's hard to find a t-shirt that fits me well and this fits me 
perfectly. And so now all I have to do is just keep ordering the same size and I know how it fits. And I could just do that. It's convenient. I, I'm all about just having it convenient and easy, all right? The fabrics are just super soft and comfy, all right? And then another thing is, what can you do in this gear? I mean, you could basically do anything in this, in Mac welding gear, right? You could go, I could go walk to Starbucks, get my cappuccino, get my uh, Americana drinks. I could go hike up Runyon. I, if I wanted to hit the skate park, I could do that too as well in these 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 pants okay so basically you could do anything and everything with mac weldon okay so i'm gonna get to the um what you need to know for 20 percent off your first order visit macweldon.com and enter promo code stevie i'll put it up there for you okay uh m-a-c-k-w-e-l-d-o-n.com and enter promo code stevie Okay, and also check out their Instagram, instagram.com slash M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N, D-O-N, that, that's what I meant, uh, and uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you later, peace. And we're back, so going back to the questions as far as your uh, comedic uh, trajectory, what were your first couple months like doing stand-up, did you have to hit up open mics and do the whole thing yeah well the first couple months before i realized like there was like a period of time like i would say like the first six months to a year before you figure out how you're supposed to do stand up you're mm -hmm. like i'm a stand up but you're not really like you're still trying to figure out how everything works like when i first started i didn't understand like you go to open mics so i did like bringer shows for like a couple months explain until what a bringer show is a bringer show is when you have to bring your friends to perform and sell tickets and like yeah sell tickets and you can't go up unless you have like five people there and Jeez. like at the beginning you're really bad so it's like all your friends are just watching you eat shit yeah, like yeah. in front of all of your friends mm -hmm. and i had a lot of friends that because i grew up here so i would bring them all to my shows and just oh, like man. bomb and bomb and bomb yeah. and then eventually um you know just from doing it and being around comics like six months in i realized okay you have to go to open mics and then just really like dedicated my life to it and that's now, crazy yeah what does it take to to become a stand-up comedian do you like how many times does one have to go up on stage every week like five nights a week to five seven nights a uh, week? five to seven like it's got to be every night especially in the beginning did you do mics tonight no i didn't oh, okay. do a mic tonight um i have a mic tomorrow and a show tomorrow so how do you find all these venue like how do you is there like a directory or is there a website where you find out all this information how do you find these things which thing the mic the mics the mics you can go to comedy bureau and it'll tell you where there's mics but then like after a while you get like now i get more book shows so i don't have to do as many mics which so is you nice. made it to the next level yes but i still do mics to work out new material like tomorrow like i'll do the ones where you sign up in advance yeah that way i don't have to like sit through sit a mic. Th yeah. yeah and i'll know what time i go up and then i can run my new material I, it's just like it's really just great to perform with like no pressure yeah you know um, what i mean yeah, yeah also i don't know why i just stuttered really fast really there. <laughs> like okay. super hard i was like i have to address the stutter that happened like 30 no, seconds fine. ago okay you're fine you're fine it's a small yeah stroke sorry about that <laughs> um because I, I i took a crack at it like years ago right and um i just realized it wasn't my thing you know my like my brother is a pretty well-known comic and um but i i realized that when i started going to these uh, uh, local mics it was just other open micers like watching you is i know that, is it still like that yeah it's a very dark it's a very <laughs> dark <laughs> yeah. honestly it's such a dark vibe Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, people are just like you have to. Well, I used to go to a place called Rocks Paper Scissors. Or oh something. yeah, no, 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 Rock Paper. Rock Paper. Oh my yeah, god, rock I used paper. to host an open mic at Rock it's Paper. It's a little dinky coffee shop, shop and yes. I'd go there at four thirty p.m. Yes. And then there would be just another guy just like at a coffee table, and I would sign this thing. Yeah. And you would have to buy something. Yeah. And then you go there, and then by the time they call your name, like either the other my open micers are off to the next mic and they're just leaving or there's they're just watching you like ignoring you like hurry oh my up, god hurry up. 
I have so many be- like weird memories from that um, coffee shop, Rock Paper, because yeah. I used I to wish host other- one of those mics. Oh, God. God bless you. I know. I How really, do you do that? <laughs> I can't even think about it without yeah. feeling slightly nauseous. It was so bad. And then Marty's. Oh, yeah. Marty's, I can't do. You want to know why Marty's freaks me out? Because Marty's, you have to pay $5 and he ignores you. He used to play this keyboard and like <laughs> so- put on his headphones and then he, he, it's like you weren't even there. Okay. But also the thing that's crazy to me is I remember the first time I went into Marty's. Well, let's explain what Marty's is. Marty's Sorry. is like this weird. How do you explain it? Marty's is just <laughs> like an older white guy that bought a building <laughs> and like it's like this building with different rooms, but he decided to make it like a space for up and like comedian, like a workshop or something. It's bizarre. So like, yeah, it's am I like, explaining that kind right? Of, it's like, I haven't done it in it's years. It's like so. an open. It's a place where comics can do like an open mic, and there's different rooms, but like no one really knows what happens there except open mics. And then sometimes there was comics sleeping there. Like it got real weird. And then I or remember, they're drinking for a forty ounce yeah, or smoking yeah. weed. There's like a slide, or they used to be like five years ago a sliding glass door. Yes, and people would sign in, but then it would be like the chill out area. Yes, and then the other comics would like you'd be up doing your thing but they would just be, yeah, they, they couldn't even hear you they would just be smoking weed and <laughs> drinking beers i do remember people drinking 40s there oh yeah that, and because there's a liquor shop right there um yeah but so also the first time i went to marty's because marty is like this kind of he's a weirdo the first time i went there i was like who the fuck is this guy marty and there is a huge picture of him right behind the stage of his head. Yeah. Well, I don't remember that. I do. I just remember people. You know what? People treated him like he was like, you remember, you know, that show, the actor studio. Yeah. 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 They, it's like they treated him like he was like the, the, the teacher, like the yes, professor. That was but it's the like, vibe. Of that. He had no credits. He was just a guy that like bought a building. Yeah. And, oh, I have a, a horror story there. It's so embarrassing. What is it? I'm getting PTSD thinking about it. I can't talk about I Marty's did, without I getting did, um, PTSD. I, I used to, well, my whole bit back then, I didn't have jokes. I okay. just did a cowboy rap. Okay. Which now turned to a puppet show. I do a puppet show. Oh there. my God, you do a puppet but, show? I, yeah, I do a puppet show. Let's, but, let's um, see it. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, that's safe. I don't know if it's it's for, is it? Yeah, it's, it, there's one after, at the end of this episode, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but um, so I was doing my, my bit doing my cowboy rat you know $40 bitter $40 bitter for you know no. <laughs> facing the manure and I did all that and then I look up and um Marlon Wayans was just watching me with great disappointment at Marty's he was talking to Marty he happened what was Marlon Wayans I, I don't no 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 it was Damon Wayans okay it was Damon it wasn't Marlon. I know he it does mics Damon. Yeah. And I didn't know he walked in and I was like, dude, I was looking like a fool up there. Like there was no one watching me. And I was like, because you thought Marty's was safe. <laughs> I thought Marty, I thought it was just Marty watching. Me. Yeah. And then I look up and they're like both like in silence. No. Just like looking at me like, <laughs> you know, and I was just, my face turned red and I'm like, okay, well, that's my time. And then <laughs> I, just, I, got, I just ran out of there. Oh my God! Yeah, no, yeah. it's okay. Every, Marty's. God bless Marty, though he gives people opportunities. Does he? I don't know. I mean, well, <laughs> you, well, you have to pay. For, does you have to pay five dollars? Yeah, I he takes debit card. I remember he was like, I was like, do you have to take debit card? He was like, yeah, I could swipe it right here. Um, he has a square and everything. Yeah. Is he an agent? Like, what is his credentials? He's, Who doesn't is have he? any. He's just a man. <laughs> it's exactly what you said. He's just a man with a building and a square, and he knows how to use his square. He's like, this, I'll just charge comics five dollars make my money back and uh, live like a king and then certain <laughs> comics who are homeless or ha- they 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 would like live there yeah like There's people would just alex yes yeah. to live there yeah people would live there he was so sad it was another asian kid <laughs> His really? name was alex and then i would like i would go let me let me check out your room it was like in the it was like in the back yeah 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 and then i just remember like there was just like a mattress Oh and no. he had like a big ass bong like that was like this tall. <laughs> and he like took a bong hit and he looked like depressed. He was like, yeah, I, I live here. 
I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You're like, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll try to do a mic or I'll try to make flyers for the next <laughs> show or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. No, so, Marty. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's just a walk down memory lane for me, you know. I'm no. Just, yeah. I, I respect what you do. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it takes a lot of hustle and, it and really does. Uh, grind and perseverance. Yeah, I've done a lot of shitty mics. How do you make it past that hard, those hardships um, to I the th- next level? I think it's just <sighs> consistency. There you go. It's consistency and being persistent because eventually, like, if you keep doing it, you're going to get better. But it's, it's just like a sport. You know how, like, athletes have to work out and like mm-hmm. go to the fucking gym and be really disciplined in that way. It's kind of like that. Like, is it really like that? I like, kind of view it like that. Yeah. Why is that? Is it because when you don't speak into the mic in front of people, you, you, you get rusty or something? Or? Yeah. It's just like, you have to just keep doing it. And it's also really like, I find it to be like addicting. So it's like, not only is it better for your comedy, but it gives you like a release that you wouldn't otherwise get. Yeah, I've heard that from other comics as well. Yeah. Um, not only that, my brother described like an adrenaline rush that he yeah. gets when he kills. Yeah, he He's is. like, I just can't describe it. Yeah. But I never got to that point because I never killed. It's so like the craziest. I've never felt the adrenaline It's rush. like the craziest high you could imagine. It's like the highest high you could imagine. So do you remember doing all these crap shows and then that one set where it was just like awesome? Yes, I remember like, <sighs> but there were so many crappy sets before. Yeah. It was like. But let's hear about the good one. The good one? Yeah. Or the, the first time you, you know that you did well and you killed and you're like, whoa, I, this is different. I'm doing well. Um. I don't know. I think like because for me, I was a regular on the Kill Tony podcast. Oh, for a while. Shout out to Tony Hitchcliffe. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to get on here as well. He is. You know what happened last night? What? Um, I got DMs on Instagram saying, "Are you watching Kill Tony right now? You're on it or something like that." I go, "No, I'm not. I'm at home." Really? And it was another um, Steve Lee, <laughs> but no. it, and he was Asian too. But he was, I think, he was a uh, handy. Cat maybe or something. Oh, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I'm Stevie Weepy. Yeah, yeah that's different. So <laughs> much but, different. But uh, it's a little different, but it's similar too. But I was like, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? I thought it was like this whole thing. But it was just a just a misunderstanding of like me knowing what was going on. I respect it. So, uh, describe how you got involved with uh, the Kill Tony show. And what is it? So, Kill Tony is this podcast that. Uh, filmed every Monday at the Comedy Store and it's hosted by Tony Hinchcliffe and mm-hmm. Brian Radban. Um, yeah, and so the basic format is that open micers put their names in a bucket, they get to do a one minute of stand-up and then they get critiqued by like a panel of more known comedians. And so... God, that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, and so when I started that... Oh. When I started Kill Tony as a regular. I did it for two years, so every week I would have to write a new minute of stand-up. So you were one of the contestants or the people going on? I was like a regular on the show, like how okay. Ali Makovsky was a regular on the okay, show. Okay, describe too. the difference between a person doing their set and a regular. Okay, so if you do the show as a regular, then every week for um, you have to write a new minute of stand-up and you have to perform it at the end of the show in front of whoever the guests are. And you have to do it every oh. week. And so I did that for two years. Dude, and, that's crazy. And I did that three years into stand-up. So I I kind of just found my voice, but I was still like a little bit anxious yeah. about like going up in front of like bigger names and stuff. But after... I did well in front of other people who were in comedy, like more known comedians that mm-hmm. would like say I did a good job. I felt more like empowered for the first time. Like after doing that show, it made me feel more empowered. I would That's say. good. It was like your gym. Yeah. Yeah. And it forced me to write and it yeah. forced me to figure out more of like the craft. And then I would get notes from people and they were like notes that I really wanted and I don't think I would have ever gotten because people don't just like necessarily give you information about like the craft when you're newer in comedy. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of like a workshop and it's yeah. Like constructive criticism every week. Yeah. And and you so get to work out your yeah faults and, and improve yeah. on your writing. 
Yeah. How did you, how do you even start to write? How do you begin to write a joke? Um, for me, like writing has never really been a problem. Like mm -hmm. I've always really enjoyed writing. And so the writing part isn't hard really. Like I just write down whatever I think might be funny. And sometimes it's funny just to me and sometimes it's funny to other people too. But like if I have any idea of anything, I just write it down or I tweet it. Mm -hmm. And then I take at the middle, in the middle of the week when I do my mic, I'll take the list and I'll just read it out loud and see how other people react and figure out how to word it. Do you um, workshop with other comedians as well? Uh, sometimes like I, uh, when I was a regular on Kill Tony, the, there was another regular at the same time as me, my friend Kimberly Congdon, who's now in New York. And sometimes we'll get on the phone with each other. And Does she have puffy hair? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I think there was someone else. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, yeah, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't. I was like, because I think I reached out to her as well. Kim? Is she off your friends list? Or like, she, she has probably pictures is. with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. It might be. It might have been Puffy in a photo. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I reached out to her as well, <laughs> getting her. Uh, and she's like, I'm in New York. Yeah, then you probably yeah, did. Yeah, well, and I said, well, you're always welcome. Yeah, uh, there's a platform for you if you want to be a guest. Cool, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's great. So mm -hmm. we get on the phone with each other about once a week. Um, we haven't done it in a few weeks, but we'll we'll each uh, set a timer <laughs> I'll mm -hmm. be like, okay, you have five minutes, let's go. And then we'll spend five minutes on her joke and then the timer will go off and we'll spend five minutes on my joke. That's and we cool. Kind of like do that. And like, she's really the only person that I've been able to like do that with. It's weird. Why is that? Do you think there's just the competitive nature in what you do? Um, there is a lot of competitive, like I'm competition, sure it's off but the it's charts. also like you start to realize that like, the people who are successful, like they have people helping them. You know what I mean? Like they have a team of people that are probably helping them write their specials, like at a certain level. Really? Yeah. The further and further you get into it, the more help you get from other people. Cause you can pay other people. Like it's like, it's takes like a team of people. I think, Is I mean it, like mm -hmm. right now I write all my own jokes. Cause I'm yeah. not at that level of like, Whatever, but like when Ellen did her special, she had people help her write her yeah. jokes, and like that makes sense. What what comedians inspire you? Like, where you look at male or female, where you're like, dude, I want that's great. I want to be like that. Um, like Ali Wong, maybe. I love I love Ali yeah. Wong. Like Ali Wong's first special, I love so much. Baby, she's Cobra. killing it. Yeah, like, yeah, five stars on. Yeah. yeah, like Ali Wong, I love. Yeah, of course, and then also. Um, like, I think Bill Burr is a genius. I think that um, Chappelle's a genius. I think that, I mean, I also loved I, uh, Mitch Hedberg. Um, My brother's pretty damn good, too, isn't he? Your brother's pretty good. Bobby Lee's, Bobby Lee's pretty damn Bobby good. Bobby Lee's pretty good. <laughs> I, we, gotta, we gotta throw that in there, Yeah, too. yeah, My and Bobby Lee. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Eric Griffin, maybe? Eric Griffin, yeah. 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 We gotta add, add those two, please. Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee. <laughs> you gotta add those. You know, those. Eric Griffin <laughs> and Bobby Lee, they inspire me the most. They're at least top 10. Top 10 for sure, yeah. no questions. Um, one thing I admire about what you guys and gals do is just, like you said, the perseverance and the work ethic. ethic. I don't know how in the hell you, you like get up five days. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's interesting because it doesn't <sighs> seem like it's work. But then at the end of the week, I'll be like, I'm so fucking tired. Yeah. And the like, payoff <laughs> is kind of in the gray too sometimes, right? The payoff is real it's hit or miss. in the gray. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? You don't know. Until, because I don't think it's kind of like, you know, with any like athlete or someone who's successful. Yeah. You don't see that athlete training, getting up at five in the morning, running up a hill. Right. And, but but you only see the end result, and it, right. I'm sure it's the same with comics. It's like it is. they're doing, they're going up to these mics, mics, bombing, 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 and then finally they're like four in the morning. They write something that might work, and then that's years of that. Yeah, well, that's what's crazy is like just to get the material and to like get it to a place where I'm comfortable with it feels like it took as long as I've been doing comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now it's like okay, now what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And just so, like so, how does that work? how does that trajectory work as far as the steps do you come up with, i've always asked this three minutes then five minutes then 10 
minutes, then 15 minutes, and then... What do you mean? As far as the time that, the chunks that you accumulate over your workload? Um, It just depends on how much there is to write in a bit. Like, if I want to talk about... Like right now, I'm trying to write a bit about men who have pull-up bars in their bedrooms. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, I know your thing. <laughs> Oh man! Um, do you we have, have a one? homie that does. Uh, we have a f- homie that like. Yeah, yeah, well, He's yeah. a UFC. But he's a badass. Yeah, yeah. But he's in between video games. He's like doing like yeah, like a hundred. Like that pull-ups. shit freaks me out. So I'm like trying to write a joke about it, right? And so yeah. for me, the way that I would do it is I would just I pick the subject I want to talk about and I just like write everything that comes to mind about how ridiculous that is to why, me. Why? Why does that freak you out though? It's physical fitness. Because it's like get a gym, go to the gym. Oh, like you need to be working out in the same room that you sleep. Like you're that intense about it. Oh. You know what I mean? Like there's something not right about that to me. And sometimes people have it like in their kitchen, like separating the rooms. It's yeah. like, no. Um, so I haven't figured it out yet. That's the thing. So I'll write it down and then I'll hit like all the things I'm thinking about it. And then I'll just take the vague premise to an open mic, talk it out and see if there's anything there. There's something there, right? Yeah, because 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 we right off, right off the top we were we were, we were laughing because we knew someone because you're you know, right. They, he, he could do like a hundred pull ups because you know a guy that's got it. Yeah. yeah, there's always a fucking asshole with a pull up bar in his room. So is that like a, a like a um, deal breaker if you're like yeah for me if you, if you meet a guy absolutely and you're like you go back to his place and you see a like what are some, some deal breakers yeah because i know there's okay. some red flags in here okay. as well so you, you mean, can go ahead you, uh, can, these, you can comment around the room <laughs> no, too because no, no. i have a barbell over there i mean toys this, this is killing me <laughs> the hot plate wait, 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 wait. the hot plate is killing me because i'm like <laughs> what is happening <laughs> is he camping <laughs> it's like <laughs> it looks like what you would bring on like I'm a sorry. camping trip yeah, but besides and, that and i don't mind so, like wh- this so that stood out right when you walked in. Right when I you walked in. You should have said something, About man. your hot plate? Yeah, I don't want to judge you. you. No, but it's okay. <laughs> so that's a but camp- you asked. But you could bring that camping. Yeah, you could bring that. Because that, that takes butane gas. Would, oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm not mad yeah. at the hot plate. I don't have a kitchen. No. That's it's, basically my kitchen. You improvise and you adapt yeah. it. Tell me, tell me what else is wrong with my place. I, love I mean, this. I really like, okay, you want to know what it's bringing up some questions. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> My dream catcher? Yes. <laughs> you knew. Me and my girlfriend, you, you know. Um, okay, we, that's we, cute. We had, that's um, fine. We've had, um, that's fine. We've had um, nightmares in here. And so uh, she, <laughs> she, well, I think it was either me or her suggested that we get a dream catcher to catch the bad dreams. And is it helping? No, <laughs> but... Try some sage. Oh, uh, I have um, Paulo Santo. S- Santo. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Tell me what else is wrong with this place. I mean, nothing else. You can be honest. No, I like this horse thing. I, yeah. They like to me. <laughs> like, can I be honest? Like all of this, like cartoony shit, I yeah. am into. Like, okay, I love it. Yeah. So I love what's happening here. It yeah. seems like you have a very large record collection in your fireplace. Yes. Which I'm also on board uh, with. What about the colored pencils? That's not weird. I love a colored okay, pencil. Okay. Um, no. Okay. Everything, um, you have some Halloween decorations going even. What do you mean? Well, I thought that was a Halloween decoration. Is that just part of your regular? That's just my regular setup. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's, no. my, that's my regular no, setup. No, I thought it was like. <laughs> yeah, describe to the viewers what you're looking at right it now. It looks like I, from the side, it looks like a wooden, like, I thought it was oh, like no, a Frankenstein. Oh, no, that's my dad's ashes. No. Yeah. I'm not pointing to your dad's ashes. Oh, I'm talking to the doll. Oh, about no, the that's doll. a doll someone made of me. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, that's can I just weird. say the doll has striped socks and you're currently wearing striped socks? There you go. I like striped socks. It's very socks. on brand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like where we're going with this. Yeah. Um, you let's have... go back to like other red flags. That, like this is, okay. this is interesting red to flags. me at least. Red yeah. flags. Um, pull up bar pull up, one. Pull up bar one, two, um, photos of yourself everywhere. <laughs> red flag. That is like. That's Ooh, bad. Pretty self-centered. Um, crystals. A man with crystals. Multiple You've met crystals. Pe- men with cr- yes. <laughs> a man who I've met. A man who um, 
was freaking out because his new Yeezys hadn't arrived yet. That was also a red flag. Um, red flags. If they get super wasted the first time you hang out with them and you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about anymore, red flags. Then it's oh, like, so you've been on dates like that? Yeah. Or I've been on dates where I'm like, I actually need to drink a lot of alcohol to tolerate you and I don't really drink. So <laughs> that would be a red flag for me personally. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, or someone who, um, let's see. I'm not down with someone who listens to too much Dave Matthews. I would not be cool with me. Yeah. Um, a guy that had like a sublime poster in his room. Like that wouldn't be for me. There's no sublime in here. Thank God. Um, oh, sorry. I have an uh, Elliot Smith poster. I like there. Elliot okay. Smith. Okay, uh, my piece. dramatic acting reel was cut to an Elliot okay, Smith okay, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this very will make it very dramatic. Very yeah. Yeah, very Before I did comedy, I yeah. cut a song to yeah. Twilight or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So is it hard? Um, I always ask the female comics, this, is it hard dealing with male comics, like picking you guys, like trying to hit on you guys when you're trying to do your craft? Um, Cause I hear that all over the place, even though it's I'm not like, a part of it. <laughs> you know what? I'm at the point now where it's like, I've been doing it a while. So I feel like the males that are around me are pretty respectful because I, I'm not just like, some like newer like female like slutty comic you know what i mean because you're you're at a different tier yeah like eventually you move you start people will see that you're taking your craft seriously mm -hmm. and it's hard to be dismissive of that mm -hmm. or to like hit on someone when you can see that they're actually putting in the work right versus like someone who's not putting in the work you know mm -hmm. what i mean because i do think that like of there's all types of people in comedy yeah <laughs> so um, does this still exist? I used to go to a mic, um, at, uh, Pig and Whistle. Oh. It was in this tiny back room. Yeah. And then you had to pay, it was kind of like Marty's, where there's this yeah. guy, like he had Ronald McDonald hair. He was like an older, he was like an older comic. And then I think he had to pay him $5 too. I bet I know this but guy. I think that was their hustle because he was like, like really old, maybe in his 50s or 60s. Yeah. And he's still kind of like lurking around and that's the way he's like hustling. Yeah. Does that still exist? For sure. There's yeah. all kinds of weirdos. In comedy, <laughs> you're like, how are you still going to open mics? This is, you're just going to keep doing this indefinitely? Yeah. And like nothing's happening and like you're just doing this? Why? Now... How do you tell a person like that, hey, maybe you should try doing something else? You don't. You just say, hi, good to see you. Hope everything's going well oh, for you, buddy. Because it's not your job. <laughs> you oh. can't be like, you can't, you have to stop pursuing your dreams because it's making me uncomfortable. We're even talking if you think it. <laughs> but even if you think it, because. <laughs> no, because you brought up a good point. You're yeah. talking about dreams. Right. You can't shatter someone's dreams. They have to shatter them themselves. They have to <laughs> recognize that on their own. It's true. Yeah. Um, so what are, let's talk about, you have your po own podcast? Yeah, I have my own podcast. Let's talk about it. Um, it's called Shank. It is a fashion slash comedy podcast. How do people, yeah, how do you spell it? S-H-E-N-K. Mm -hmm. And you can find it on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. So all those places, I just started putting it on YouTube. So when this airs, there will be an episode with Jeff Garland out on YouTube and another maybe a singer just go to youtube check it out Shank. cool cool and then also i like the artwork whoever did the for the poster oh like yeah the, cool. who did yeah. that who did the art for that uh my buddy adriel it came out cool adriel. yeah yeah because yeah. Yeah. you could tell those are like things that you like or yeah he made me like a paper doll mm -hmm. um on the album cover because i love clothes and he yeah. made it based off of clothes that i actually have so it's pretty cool um mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's it's fun because I sit down with comics and I ask them about like fashion and sometimes it's just ridiculous because it'll yeah. be like me talking to someone who like you wouldn't think would want to talk about fashion and then I'll get like a ridiculous response out of them. Right, right. You and should it, you should get Griffin on there. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get Griffin. Yeah, on there. Um, yeah, he'd be great. So, <laughs> what's up? With and then I also have a, um, <laughs> I also have a weed smoking smoking web series on Comedy Central. Yeah, dude, I saw, yeah. dude. Yeah, let's, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's called Shanks for Smoking. Dude, let's. How did you even get, like? How did you get? How did yeah, that? how did you get to that level? I mean, that's huge. Uh, you're um, on the show on Comedy Central. Yeah. So yeah. 
Well, I started just putting out all kinds of different content, like different cannabis content. And wasn't even because people will be like, is your whole personality weed? And it's like, no, that's not my whole personality. Right. Like just because somebody likes drinking beer doesn't mean that's their whole personality. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, it's right, like right. I smoke weed. I'm going to smoke weed whether or not I put it on my Instagram. And if I put it on my Instagram and people can fucking vibe with it and I'm like, this is actually who I am. But you would smoke regardless. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, it's just yeah. like if who Instagram I am. didn't exist, you probably smoke. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I um, just did a few podcasts that were weed based mm-hmm. and posted some stuff with joints and stuff. And Comedy Central hit me up and they were like, do you have any ideas for a weed show? And I was like, yeah. Wait, through Instagram? Um, I had met with them a few times, That's like crazy. back and forth. But like, yeah, they could see that I was like making like my own content and like yeah. I had my podcast and they said, do you have any ideas for any short form weed shows and i was like actually i do and then we made oh, the show that's so yeah cool yeah and it's been really fun um yes mm-hmm. dude that's a big deal yeah it was cool um like what like when you got the news like did that that totally just brightened your day and then do you tell yeah. your mom and dad yeah and- my mom and dad have can see me smoking weed on <laughs> youtube <laughs> yeah yeah but that's i mean that's a, that's it's a show yeah it's great yeah it's super exciting and i've had um there's six episodes yeah and then hopefully we'll make more how how do the viewers and listeners tune into that how do they find they that? can find it on youtube on comedy central youtube originals you just type in shanks for mm-hmm. smoking and it'll pop right up that's shanks yeah S- s-h-e-n-k s-h-e-n-k s s shanks for smoking yeah yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you even, that, it seems to me like, I'm just guessing that you, your intention wasn't to get a Comedy Central thing. You just did it, right? Yeah. It's weird because <clears throat> um, it feels like as things are just now starting to click after like so many years of just nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it was just like so many times like you you sit down with people and they say you're going to make something or they say that they're interested in something and then nothing happens and like for me that it happened so many times that even when like we were talking about doing it even as i was doing it i couldn't even really believe that i was doing it because so many times it felt like nothing really happened so what's (laughs) the lesson to be learned here perseverance and just keep keep chopping away yeah yeah so I think that's, that's, I mean, okay, since you spoke upon that, let's, do you have any suggestions for up and coming comics that are, like want to get to your level or like want to pursue comedy? If you have to really want to pursue comedy, like you, you have, have to, to love really, it, right? you have to really love it because it is soul sucking in a lot of ways if you yeah. don't love it. Cause it, you have to give everything to comedy. <laughs> It's like relationship, like literally everything, like especially like sa- you make so many sacrifices, mm-hmm. financial sacrifices, relationship mm-hmm. sacrifices, like you'll miss out on events, like your friends getting married sometimes or like yeah. the stuff like that because like of comedy and you'll just want to because you'll love it so much. Like if you're not willing to do all of that stuff, then just don't do it. Right. Okay. What's another, what's another suggestion? Uh, Just write just right every night every night every night or whenever you think something that might be funny just write it down and it doesn't even have to be like a fully fleshed out idea just if you think it's funny maybe it is funny Mm -hmm. and you can find out how to make it more funny later right how does one find their own voice in comedy by just doing comedy like just getting up and like trying and trying and figuring out what works and what doesn't work like Mm -hmm. when i first started i would do a lot of act outs which i don't do now at all Mm -hmm. um yeah well yeah describe what is is like if like i was talking about um an experience uh an experience with somebody from australia and then i went in like a full australia accent australian accent yeah. and like for me i'm not comfortable like switching gears from like Dude. being like yeah doing your normal voice or, uh, yeah, yeah yeah like that's just not something that i'm comfortable with incorporating into my stand-up but i feel like I could separate the two and do acting stuff but that but not mix with my stand-up if right, that makes sense right, like right. i just don't it doesn't vibe for me personally, but then other people like Crystalia, he can kill an act out or, you know what I mean? Like just different. 
You have to commit to it, don't you? You have to fully commit to it. And for me, like, I'm too um, inside my own head to fully free myself in that way Mm -hmm. in in terms of, like, doing an act out in the middle of stand-up. And, like, Mm -hmm. my stand-up's pretty, like, dry, like, deadpan, so. Yeah. So what's, like, the basic formulas that, like, up-and-coming comics can learn? Is it just, like, set up punchline, set up punchline, or just telling stories? How does that work? Um, Well, for me, I don't really tell a lot of stories. If you're, I think if you're going to tell a story, you really want to just, like, trim the fat and just make it as tight as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to have, like, a story that's super long with unnecessary words. You'll lose people. If you can just, like write it and then tr- like punch it up and just mm-hmm. make it as tight as possible then i would recommend that and okay. then um yeah set up punch is a great way to write i mean for me doing kill tony taught me how to be funny in a minute so it really taught me how to eliminate the extra fat from oh, that didn't right. need to be there because right, right, right. it's like okay punchline 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 out it's been 60 seconds that's it yeah so it's like if you don't get them in right away you're kind of screwed does if one's wanting to pursue comedy do they have to move to new york or los angeles to make it honestly i started in la so i am you know i think you can start from wherever Mm -hmm. if i was somebody who lived in the midwest i would just start there i would get Mm -hmm. decent like be the best person in your hometown before you sacrifice everything yeah right right and then like eventually i think um you can only grow so much in like a small town with stand-up mm-hmm. like if you're the best person in, in your town yeah then and you've come you're committed to the craft then i think you kind of need to be in the bigger in a bigger city to blow up but then also like for me it's interesting because i started here so it took me a long time to like get to get good Mm -hmm. rather than if i just moved here and i was already good right it's just a different journey so you know what i mean no i hear you um so what is the what are some of your future goals through comedy like what what do you want to end up doing eventually um i want to have a netflix special i want to have a tv show a comedy special yeah is that every comic's like dream to do that probably okay um that's the top like one of the top ending yeah like i feel like i want to do that hopefully soon Mm -hmm. i've been doing it you know almost 10 years i feel like i've i'm i have material i want to get rid of so that's something that's in the future hopefully Mm -hmm. and then a tv show and i've written a few and i'm Mm -hmm. trying to get those going so both of those things are so what does one do when you've done your special maybe you've done three or four specials and you've done tv then where do you go from there oh movies movies you think <laughs> i don't, I don't, I don't know. know there's no I other mean, where else could you go i think you just go wherever you feel like you want to be right so right. it's like i don't think there's really the thing with comedy or anything in entertainment is that there's not really one clear path so it's like you could do this and do this and then you could be interested in this and for me the goal is just to create stuff that i'm excited about and to Mm -hmm. um go wherever i feel the most joy cool fair enough um seems like you're on the right path hopefully yeah you got you're hitting your mics you're writing um you got this comedy central thing going on yeah you got your podcast as well yeah do you have um because we're we're kind of boiling down to the end too right as well we got, I wanted to, let's, do you have like a website or where people could look at your stuff or? You can follow me on Instagram at princess shank princess, like normal. And then another S H E N K. Mm-hmm. I post all my show dates there on my Instagram stories. There's a link to the comedy central show mm-hmm. there. And I also swipe up to my podcast there too. And then Twitter at princess shank as well for show dates and jokes all mm-hmm. that stuff okay yeah. and we have 10 okay this i want to end it with this you, you have to say three more things wrong w- wrong with my apartment really <laughs> yeah yeah i can't but, tell but, you but, 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 no no i'm not i'm not i i i, I just want to know <laughs> okay yeah this cord you, you haven't even looked into the box there like I'm I, I have a box here no no this yeah. go, this cord <laughs> okay, okay which one this cord <laughs> 
<laughs> you know which cord. With this, this one, one right here? This one, yeah. It's for lighting, though. I mean, we're, It's we're, a good lighting it's, vibe. It's, yeah. But maybe... <laughs> no, but when the when the podcast is over, I just connect it automatically. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not like... Okay, yeah. okay. What else? Do you really want me to tell you? Yeah. I could take it. Wow. It's a wild journey here. Um, okay, I have a question. Okay. <gasps> Is to that Aladdin? Like, disc- I'm looking at an Aladdin figurine. Oh, yeah. That's it is. on your refrigerator. It's a Bobby Brown, there's a Bobby Brown tape. And a trans, and a go and a go box of go bots lunchbox and there's an Aladdin figurine next to a thing of wet Swiffers on, yeah, on the next fridge thing with um yeah a boiler a boiler uh, wet Swiffers <laughs> and yeah but in my defense yes. someone because I do another uh, vlog called Stevie's PO Box a fan mm-hmm. sent that to me which I. I don't have the name off top because no, I'm not which of. fan, but which stuff. All of that stuff, the Go Bots, <laughs> the, oh, the Lunchbox, okay, okay, the Bobby Brown tape, okay, and the Aladdin okay, figurine. Okay, okay, okay. So that's is that that's fine. That gets me. I'm in the clear. You're right? in the clear. Okay, okay. What else? So that's one. Um, the I voted sticker. It's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> but did you, <laughs> Craig? Did I vote? It's, it's like yeah, Craig went with me. Weird Craig. flex. <laughs> Um, uh, no i'm just kidding okay <laughs> um we'll remove that later on in the week okay all right what else do you really want me to keep going yeah every time i, I, I go love you get I really lo- defensive i love it, I love it. <laughs> you no, go, no it's not, fine everything's fine no, I'm not, I, I don't take offense to it at all yeah okay. go go ahead get in there <laughs> that is, go ahead go ahead uh, what about the wig? Oh, There's a wig. Oh, I see the in your fireplace above the records. Yeah. Which there are a ton of vinyl records. What, are which, you, what else are you looking at? There's a lot of hats. Seems like you might be a hat guy. Well, that's for a little while. No, what? These? Yeah, but what, what are those ones? The ones well, you don't want people no, 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 to no, say. I don't want to talk about that. That's a, that's a mystery. That's for Why are you being else. weird about those hats? Yeah, well, no, no, that that a specific one I, I can't talk about. Well, that one's that's the most <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, uh, the, it's, a it's a care. It's okay, a, it's okay, a okay, okay. Um, so these? Yeah, the fact that you're, it's just funny that they were in the fireplace above some albums. What's that one? A derby. It's from the, the movie that you're scared of, It. Chapter oh, two. Oh, oh. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. This is not normal. I don't think so. What, all these hats? You have a lot of hats. I mean, what's wrong? How many of them are you wearing? Uh, not that much. Yeah. I don't know why. You're right. Is you it? Know. Is it? Well, how? How would you equate it to a female? Like, is it like a female having like scarves? Like too many scarves? Yeah. yeah. Like a hundred yeah. scarves? Yeah. It's like. It's weird. It's not like. It's like. I just knew that you're not wearing all of them. How did you know that? Because you as someone that. who you has you multiple hats, you there's only just... two that I really like. Which ones? Of my personal hat collection. Oh, I, like, do are you, you a have... minimalist? No. Oh. I have a ton of clothes. Okay, but what's but wrong with the, these hats? I'm saying, looking at your hats right now, yeah. tell me which hats you actually wear. Because I know you don't wear all of them, and you know you don't wear all of them. I bet there's two or three that you like more than the rest. <laughs> These two I wear the most. Okay. Because uh, it's my, my friend and artist, David Cho. It's his uh, hat that yeah. he designed. Yeah. And then That's this is cool my one. homeboy, uh, Mestizo's, his clothing um, business. Uh, it's called Heavyweight Global. Cool. And he's, he sent this to me. Cool. And he's a good friend of mine. Like, I've known him since he was 15 years old. I respect that. So these, that's why I wear these two. All right. But... But so these ones. The, those are just, you're right. I don't know how I ended up with them. Craig gave me a few. <laughs> Craig gave me at least two. Because he, he um, Craig uh, is a giving person. He's constantly, he's constantly giving. So this giving is Craig's gift. fault. It's no, not I'm just fault, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he, he's a, a type of person that is always giving. That's nice, Craig. Yeah, so he's always giving me stuff, like hats and stuff like that. Yeah, for birthdays and stuff. It's crazy. You didn't even mention the wig that's in there. You did. <laughs> yeah, it's under but there the is beanie. A wig, yeah. There's a wig. Yeah. What yeah. is that about? Character? Uh, yeah, this is stuff. It's just fun. Just to have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just fun. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's a Zelda, Legend of Zelda. No. Yeah, it's uh, from a video game. Do you like Let video games? Oh, yeah. I'm taking oh, a high yeah. I'm, 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 Isn't that a red flag, though, too? <laughs> Yeah, what? yeah, 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 what? yeah, yeah. What? Okay. Let's talk about Let your, it. I see your controller. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Get oh, to the well, real. Let's get to the issues. Yeah. The video whoa, whoa, game whoa, controller. Whoa, whoa. What do you have an issue with? Uh -oh. With video game. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. What, what's the issue? Okay. How often are we doing it? How often are we you, gaming? I'm, a, I'm on a hiatus because I want to write. What does that mean? That means that there's a new expansion pack that came out with the game I was playing called Destiny 2. I did not purchase it. I didn't, I haven't turned on my system for, how long has it been, Craig? Two weeks? It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. Is it hard? Yeah. <laughs> you seem yeah. like you, yeah, it you're going to like is, break out into like a cold sweat. No, because <laughs> just like you, I'm like working on new music and I want to, cool. I, this is, I just had a, um, a realization that the more time, because when I, when we play, it's at least eight hours. We play till like seven in the morning. We play till seven in the morning. Really? Yeah. Ryan, do we play out? How many hours? We put in some hour. Yeah. We're not playing thirty minutes and getting off. No, but it's not seven. Five. Yeah. We're playing not, at you least guys are five. Having Ren, are we at <laughs> least? Yeah, Ren's been watching. He's watched this for at least three, right? I think you guys cut the stream before, and then you guys keep going. You so guys, do you guys saying? do like Twitch? Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's a podcast that we did called WFE. It's, oh, Eric Griffin was is a part of it. Cool. And it's like we all would uh, stream and play games together. Well, that's yeah. fun. And when my girlfriend uh, lived here, yeah, um, it got in the way because she would be trying to sleep, and uh, we oh, would I be, would kill you. And then she <laughs> would she would get up and be like, "Really?" And I'm like, "I'm so sorry, babe." What would you? And then I would be playing. It's addicting because it's competitive. You're playing other people what, that have the same skill system? level as you. What kind of system Xbox is this? Xbox One. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Just, yeah, I'm sorry. I just. I, yeah, I'm having, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you not afraid? Okay, so with this? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with this? Jeweling? Yeah. <sighs> Isn't it like bad to do? Well, I, in my defense, I chewed tobacco for 10 years. My, my teeth are turning black. So what's Let's better? See. Okay. They're getting pink again. <laughs> um, but they were black and my and then they were bleeding. Do go Nicorette. I tried. I couldn't <laughs> do it. I wanna I used to smoke cigarettes. Okay. And so when I quit, I'm sober now. I am I'm off this is the only thing I do. But um, I always like, because there's flavors like vanilla, tobacco flavors that I like. I enjoy it. Okay. But well, you I'll, do you, Steve. Uh, but but I, will, I, mean, I am going to quit eventually everything. That's just your last thing. That's, That's my like last thing. That's your security thing. blanket um, for now. Okay. So, like, hey, dude, thanks for coming by. Thanks that for was awesome. Did you have so fun? Much fun? So much fun. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Um, at the end, can you, oh, well, we'll talk at the end as far as, because we, we, we like to get a list of other people you might find good on here yeah, let's let her promote her. yeah yeah let's uh, promote your instagram your website you yeah know, all your stuff again your, your your podcast as well yeah and then i have a couple things too okay cool uh you can find my podcast shank s-h-e-n-k on mm -hmm. itunes spotify stitcher laughable and youtube sarah weinchink youtube and then you can find my Comedy Central series, Shanks for Smoking, on Comedy Central Original YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you can follow me at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter for show dates. Um, and Shank is S-H-E-N-K. Yes. W-E-I-N-S-H-E-N-K. Correct. Sarah is not with the H, it's S-A-R-A. -A. A. Yes, thank you. Okay. Dude, you did great, man. Thanks for that having was, me. It was so was much awesome. fun. awesome. Um, so, uh, we have a Patreon attached to the show. If you want to keep the show above ground, then if you make your pledge, if you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby, all with double E's. Our newest patron for the, uh, this week is Andrew. Welcome, Andrew. Um, there's also, there's a, I have a new website, so go to stevieweebyshow.com. Um, for, you know, buy a shirt if you want. If you don't want to buy a shirt, you don't have to. 
Um, all my music's at stevieweebybandcamp.com. And shout out to the sponsor again, Mac Weldon. Go get some threads there. Check that out, Mac Weldon. Mac okay. Weldon. Um, we have a new we have a new thing called uh, Stevie on the Streety, where I do um, street interviews, and people seem to like it. And so look out for those. Uh, Renz also and Craig, we're working on clips as well, so we're adding that in the mix. Let's say, what am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. Um, I have a new uh, uh, content called Stevie's P.O. Box where people send in packages and I unbox them on camera. Send your packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Mm, support the Homies podcast, um, Necroelectric, Losco Projects, and WFE. And now it's time for Little Ray's World. Good having you, buddy. Yay. Welcome to Little Ray's World Show. All I gotta say is kids' minds must grow. I got abducted by some aliens dropped in snow. Whoa. Stuck into a world that I do not know. So join me in adventures now And I promise not to have a cow My name is Little Ray Hey, hey My name is Little Ray Hey, hey, hey So welcome to my world To all the boys and girls What the hell do we got here this week, babe? Looks like a random dude. Hey, man. Hey, partner, what's your name? What are you doing around these parts, man? I don't know. You don't know what your name is, man? Well, how the hell did you end up here, partner? You don't know how you died or ended up here, or you don't know your name? I don't know. You're really starting to frustrate me, partner. What is your god dang name? And look at me in my god dang eyes, partner. Oh, my God. I'm starting to lose my patience here. Beep. Can you run diagnostics on this guy? Beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Well, there's no information on him or what? So you're telling me you're just another John Doe? I don't know. You know what, man? I don't got time for this, partner. But me and Beep wrote a song about you anyway, Mr. John Doe. This one's about John Doe, man. John Doe, woo! Mm. Oh, oh, no, another John Doe. He's my foe. Where did he come from? Man, nobody knows. Beep tried to bestow a gift. He said, no, don't disrespect my robot. You'll feel my blow. I'll play you like a banjo in the cold. If you keep on saying nothing, these things I'll throw. I'd rather talk to a reindeer in snow. I miss my buddy from the south. There's
join us in about two weeks or so for another episode of Little Ray's World, man. And make sure you go to www.stevieweebyshow.com and get some of that cool merch, man. Let's get her done. Ooh la la.